Here we want to add the fractions and make sure that our sum is in simplest form. The most important thing to remember about adding fractions is we have to obtain a common denominator. So looking at our first example, we have three-fifths plus one-sixth. So looking at the denominator of five and the denominator of six, the least common denominator is going to be the least common multiple of five and six, which in this case would be thirty. So we need to rewrite each of these fractions with a denominator of thirty. So I'll have to multiply the numerator and denominator of three-fifths by six, and multiply the numerator and denominator of one-sixth by five. Notice how in both cases we're multiplying by a fraction that has a value of one, therefore we're just changing the form of the fraction, but they will be equivalent fractions. So when we multiply these two fractions, we're going to have eighteen thirtieths. We multiply here, we're going to have five thirtieths. Now that our denominator is the same, we can add the fractions. The denominator is going to stay the same, and then we add the numerator. So eighteen plus five is equal to twenty-three. In our second example, we have twelve twenty-sevenths plus two-ninths. So the first step is to determine our least common denominator, which is going to be the least common multiple of nine and twenty-seven. So this question is a little bit more challenging. So what we can do is use the prime factorization of the denominators to help us determine the least common denominator. So what we're going to do is rewrite this first fraction as twelve over the prime factorization of twenty-seven, which would be three times three times three, plus two over the prime factorization of nine, which is three times three. So now keeping in mind that in order to add these fractions, the denominators must be the same, notice how if this fraction here had an extra factor of three, the denominators would be the same. So we can multiply by a factor of three here, as long as we do the same to the numerator. So by using the prime factorization of the denominators, we can identify the LCD by determining which factors we must multiply by to make the denominators the same. Now let's go ahead and rewrite these with our common denominator. This is going to be twelve twenty-sevenths, the original fraction, plus this fraction here is now going to be six twenty-sevenths. Denominator stays the same. Add the numerator. Twelve plus six is equal to eighteen. But we can't forget to simplify here. We saw above the prime factorization of twenty-seven would be three times three times three, and the prime factorization of eighteen would be two times three times three. So this simplifies, three over three simplifies to one here and here. So the final sum here is two-thirds. We'll take a look at one more example in the next video. In order to subtract fractions, we have to have a common denominator, and hopefully we can find the least common denominator. Looking at our first example, we have a denominator of two and a denominator of ten. We want to determine the smallest number that is divisible by both two and ten. So in this example, the LCD would be ten. So let's go ahead and rewrite this and leave some space. So we take one half and multiply the denominator by five. We can do that as long as we multiply the numerator by five as well, which is like multiplying by the fraction of five over five, which will give us five tenths minus three tenths. And now that our denominator is the same, we can go ahead and subtract. The denominator stays the same, and we subtract the numerator. So five minus three is equal to two. So the difference is two-tenths, but two-tenths does simplify. We can rewrite ten as two times five. Notice how they have a common factor of two, so our simplified difference is one-fifth. Remember, these are not disappearing, they're simplifying to ones. Now let's look at a second example. This one's going to be a little bit more challenging to determine the least common denominator. And when we have a challenging problem like this, it's helpful to determine the least common denominator by looking at the prime factorization of the denominators. 
So we're going to go ahead and rewrite these two fractions with the denominators in prime factored form. So we're going to have 19 all over the prime factorization of 42. 42 is 6 times 7, so we'll have 2 times 3 times 7 minus 13 over the prime factorization of 70. Well, 70 would be 10 times 7, and 10 is 2 times 5, so we'll have 2 times 5 times 7. Now we can use these prime factors to help build the least common denominator. Meaning if we want to subtract these fractions, the denominators must be the same and therefore contain the same factors. So starting with this first denominator, we can ask what factors does this denominator have that this one doesn't have? Notice how this one has a factor of five, but this one doesn't. So it's going to have to have a factor of five if the denominators are going to be the same. So multiply this by five, and we can do this as long as we do the same to the numerator. Now we can go to the second fraction and ask, what does this first denominator have that the second denominator doesn't have? Notice how this has a factor of three and this one doesn't, so it must contain a factor of three if the denominators are going to be the same. So we'll multiply the numerator by three as well. Notice how now we have a common denominator because both denominators contain the same prime factors. So let's go ahead and rewrite this. 19 times 5 is going to be 95. So we have 95 all over 2 times 3 times 7 times 5, which is equal to 210. Minus, here we're going to have 13 times 3, that's 39, all over the common denominator of 210. Now that we have a common denominator, we can subtract. Denominator stays the same. The numerator will be 95 minus 39, that's 56. And of course, the last step is to simplify this fraction. Let's go ahead and write out the prime factorization of the numerator and denominator. So let's go ahead and clear this out. Here's the prime factorization of 56. We have three factors of two and a factor of seven. And for 210, we'll have 21 times 10 to start. So we have a factor of two, a factor of three, a factor of five, and a factor of seven. And now we can simplify this fraction. And now we can simplify. Two over two simplifies to one. Seven over seven simplifies to one. So the simplified difference is four fifteenths.